The maker of the popular mobile game Fortnite is suing Apple and Google after both companies removed the game from the online app stores. The move came after Fortnite's developer, Epic Games, created its own in-app payment system. That move bypassed Apple's standard payment methods, which includes a 30 percent cut of any in-app purchases. According to Epic Games, the decision by Apple to remove Fortnite highlights Apple's control of the market. Apple has been facing recent antitrust concerns over the way it operates the App Store. Apple and Google both claim their 30 percent fees keep their online stores up and running. For more, CNET senior producer Dan Patterson joins me now. Hi, Dan. Good to see you. So what exactly happened with Epic, Apple and Google that led to Fortnite's removal from app stores? Good to see you, Elaine. It appears as though this is kind of a coordinated dance that's playing at a game, pun intended. Um, so <laughs> a few days ago, Epic, which is one of the world's most powerful game companies, introduced a digital currency into their game Fortnite, which is available on lots of different platforms, including iOS and Android. Uh, but this happened to also violate the terms and conditions of Android and iOS. I'm sure if you've downloaded almost any game on those platforms, you've probably uh, uh, encountered digital currencies. This is how these platforms make money. They typically take about 30 percent, but I say typically because it appears as though Apple's policies have been kind of uneven, especially recently. So this seemed to be pretty coordinated. Epic knew what they were doing. Fortnite is so popular. It is closer to a social network. People uh, communicate with their friends on Fortnite. They share memes. There's often movie watching parties inside the game. So this is not a teeny little app. Epic is a massive billion dollar company and this was a coordinated attack. Apple and Google both responded, of course, as we, uh, as you said in the intro there, by banning the apps. Now, stay with me on this. Epic then responded not just by uh, accusing the company, uh, Apple, of antitrust violations, but of course by releasing a YouTube video that mocked Apple's very famous 1984 commercial about being constrained and stuck inside uh, platforms that don't you uh, let you express your creativity. So again, Elaine, it's super complicated. It's also... Um, mm -hmm kind of funny because you see these billion dollar companies firing in this tete-a-tete. -tete. It's fascinating. I mean, the fact that they put together some kind of uh, parody video, it sounds like I, they're really going to great lengths to try and get each other. Um, but the bottom line here, what does that mean for users? Are they still going to be able to play the game? Well, what this means in the short term is that users lose. Look, um, Apple has banned and Google has banned one of the world's most popular games. Again, this is like a social network. It would be very similar to Apple saying, hey, Facebook, get off the platform because you violated some terms and conditions. And of course, Apple has been under fire recently uh, because uh, with an email application called Hey, they recently uh, sent some emails that looked like they were extorting cash from the company. Um, they very recently banned uh, Microsoft's xCloud Game Pass gaming service, which is like a Netflix for gaming, same with Google Stadia. Um, so we see that Apple has kind of uh, applied their policies in a way that is provocative to companies like Epic. Uh, so again, in the short term, uh, consumers, you lose. In the long term, it is apparently a coordinated attempt by uh, Epic to kind of bend Apple to their will, which is fascinating. It doesn't happen a lot. I mean, can Epic actually win this case? Well, this right now, there's really not much of a, a, a legal lawsuit, or there's a lawsuit, but there isn't a, a really protected law case uh, happening. Epic could win strategically, however, because it's not just Epic fighting this fight. Uh, like I said, Microsoft, mm -hmm. very powerful in the space, um, has a new gaming subscription service coming out in the fall, and they are pressuring Apple on very similar grounds. So this might be kind of a battle of public opinion, but in the short term, uh, to once again answer your question, Elaine, consumers lose. So what does this ultimately mean for the antitrust probe into the big five tech companies? Well, it is one more bright and shining example of the power that these platforms have. Um, Apple, of course, isn't just one platform. It's many platforms. It is iOS. But there's also Mac OS, 
iPad OS, and uh, all of these platforms exert quite a bit of leverage and influence in the market. So does Google Play. Look, they have uh, the vast majority of the market share. Google Play is not a small competitor in this space. And these two companies, I mean, really, two companies control what we do on our phones. All right, Dan Patterson for us. Dan, thank you very much. Good to see you.